Today, we're gonna to be going over five super easy masking techniques in After Effects that will help you become a better visual effects artist. Number one, the title reveal. There are a number of ways that you can do a text reveal, but for this example, we'll stick with the most basic. Create a text layer and type out the title you want to appear from behind the car. Use the Align tab to position the text in the center of the composition. Next, we'll grab the pen tool and draw a mask around the text. Mask around the part of the car that will be revealing the title and then complete the mask. Set the mask to subtract, then hit M on the keyboard to bring up the mask path. Add a keyframe right before the start of the reveal and then select and drag the mask frame by frame while holding the shift key to stay lined up with the car until the full text is revealed. Each one of these movements will automatically add a keyframe for you. Then hit F on the keyboard to bring up mask feathering and add enough to match with the motion blur of the car. Number two, sky replacement. You might have a shot that you really love, but the sky just isn't that interesting. In this example, we're using a simple coastline with a straight horizon, but this can also be done with more complex horizon lines like mountains or cityscapes. First, mask along the horizon and using the pen tool, adjust the edges if there is any curvature. Hit F on the keyboard for feather and add a small amount of feathering to help blend with the new background. Next, we'll select the new sky clip we want to use in our comp and drag and drop it underneath our masked foreground layer. Hit P on the keyboard for position or click and drag the background layer until the horizon matches with the foreground layer. Make sure to also pay attention to the lighting in the scene. In this case, the sun is on the opposite end of the original photo. So we'll click on the new sky layer, go to transform and flip horizontally. Now the sun is coming from the correct side. Then select the foreground layer and use the curves effect to match the color with the new sky. Add some contrast to both layers and now you have a much more visually appealing beach scene. Number three, license plate blur. You might be working on a documentary or something where there are cars in your shot, but you can't show the license plates. This is where we will use mask tracking to add blur that moves with the cars as they drive by. Duplicate the clip and move your playhead to the first frame where the license plate is fully in frame. Draw a rectangle mask around the plate and then add a mask path keyframe. Next, manually add keyframes by moving the mask to match the plate position back through the timeline until the mask is fully out of frame. Then jump back to the first keyframe you made. Right click on the mask and click track mask, and then click track selected masks forward in the tracker panel. This will track the license plate and automatically move the mask and keyframes for you. Once the tracking is done, repeat the process for any other items needing blurred out in the scene. Another example this can work for is blurring faces. Once all masks are tracked, select the layer and add a fast box blur effect. Number four, rotoscoping. Now let's say you have a shot of a person that you really like, but you want to put a different background behind them and you didn't film them on a green screen. We can use masking to remove them from the original background through a method called rotoscoping. Now, you could go the route of using the pen tool and painstakingly draw a mask around the entire subject by hand, but this needs to be done for every single frame, and with 24, 30, and even sometimes 60 or more frames per second, this can become quite the nightmare, and trust me, you don't want to have to do it. Luckily, there is a tool in After Effects called Rotor Brush 2. To use the Rotor Brush tool, double click on the clip to open up the layer panel. Click and drag around the areas that you want to keep. Rotor Brush will generate what it thinks is the edge of the subject you're trying to cut out. Holding down Alt and dragging around the background will tell Rotor Brush to remove this part of the image. Play through the rest of the frames and touch up any inconsistencies. Rotor Brush 2 uses machine learning to adapt to the brush strokes you make and will get closer and closer to the result you're after as you do this a few times. This may take you 20 minutes or longer depending on how long your clip is, but it's light years faster and more accurate than trying to use the pen tool by hand. If you notice Rotor Brush having problems adapting, make sure you have Best selected under the Quality drop-down menu. This should help smooth out any weird jitters. Once you're satisfied with the Roto, it's time to refine the edge of the mat using the Refine Edge tool. Click and hold the Rotor Brush tool to find the Refined Edge tool. Using the brush, click and drag along the edge of the subject. Adjust any feathering, edge contrast, and chatter reduction as needed. Once you're satisfied with the edge, click the freeze button to lock in the roto job, then jump back into the main composition. Next, we'll grab the background we want to use by dragging and dropping under our subject. At this point, you could be done, but if you want to integrate the person in the scene even more and you have access to something like Red Giant Super Comp, you can add things like edge erosion, edge blend, and light wrap paired with a little color correction. Now keep in mind that this is just a quick and dirty example of rotoscoping, but with a little time and patience, you can get some really clean results. 
but use a green screen if you can. And finally, number five, auto tracing. Auto tracing is a way that you can have After Effects look at the alpha channel and generate a mask shape automatically for you. This comes in especially useful for things like generating effects on logos from a PNG or a vector graphic. Scale the logo to fit the comp and then pre-comp the layer. With the pre-comp selected, go up to the layer menu and select auto trace. Since this is a still graphic, we can use current frame so it only traces one frame. And for this example, we can leave generate new layer unchecked. This would apply the mask to a new solid layer separate from the current layer, but we don't need that for this. Click OK and Auto Trace will start generating the masks. Next, we'll grab the background that we want to use. Drag and drop the background under the logo layer. Select the logo layer and add the Saber plugin by Video Copilot. This is a free plugin, so if you don't have it, you can download it for no cost, and honestly, you should just have it. It's awesome. Click on Render Settings and choose Transparent, then click on Customize Core and select Layer Masks. This will shape the saber effect to the shape of the masks that we auto traced. Choose a preset you like. In this case, I'm choosing fire because the market is burning to the ground, so it's fitting. Next, to add just a little extra flair, let's duplicate the logo layer and on the bottom layer, choose the burning saber preset. Set the intensity to 100, the spread to 0.2, and the bias to 0.3. This will add a little extra smokiness underneath the fire layer. After all that, we could be done, but let's add a little movement just for fun. Set all the layers to be 3D layers. Select the red charts layer and hit P for position and push it back in Z space and then scale up to refit the frame. Create a 3D camera layer and make sure depth of field is enabled. Place the camera layer on top and move the playhead two seconds in. Add a position keyframe for the camera and then drag the playhead back to the beginning. Zoom the camera's position in on the Z axis and add another keyframe. Select both keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them and then turn on motion blur for all layers. And then finally, open up the graph editor and adjust the animation speed to your liking. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.